Welcome to this noonday edition of Reflections from Yates Chapel on the campus of Millsouths College. I'm Joey Shelton, and it's my joy to bring reflections, or share, rather, reflections with you uh, today. Last week, Ricky James read for us a passage from Matthew chapter 18 and then reflected upon forgiveness. And I'm going to pick up in that same chapter where uh, Ricky's passage left off, and we're going to do forgiveness part two. So let's hear the word of the Lord, the first part of uh, my passage for today, Matthew chapter 18, verse 21. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. Thus ends the reading of the gospel for this moment. Now, some translations say that this 77 times is actually 70 times 7. So how do we keep score with forgiveness when even the translations aren't necessarily uh, keeping the same score? It's like grace. We can't keep score on God's grace because it is God's free gift to us. It's like love. We can't keep score on love because love is God's gift to us. God first loved us. God so loved us. God so loved all of creation. It is good. And yet, when we get to the part about loving ourselves and loving our neighbors, sometimes we forget from whence love comes in the first place. And so Jesus reminds us that this is not about keeping score, and he gives a parable to make his point. So now here, Matthew chapter 18, beginning with verse 23. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payments to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, Have mercy on me. Have patience. I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii and seized him by the throat. And he said, pay me what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. But he refused. And then he went, threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw this, saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. And then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. 
Thus ends the reading of the gospel. Harsh, harsh words in a story that should have been filled full of joy. We have this situation of majestic pardon, 10,000 talents, more than could ever be repaid. Jesus is making this huge statement of hyperbole. 10,000 talents and the Lord forgives. And then this relatively small psalm that is owed to the one who is forgiven, this rationed forgiveness is not present. The one who has been forgiven refuses to forgive. It bothers me that at the end of this passage it talks about that this initial this initial person who has been forgiven is then that is then thrown into this place where they are tortured. But I believe that what has happened is that when we refuse to forgive, we torture ourselves. When we refuse to forgive others, it most likely has been birthed because we don't know how to forgive ourselves. When we refuse to offer grace to others, it is because we have never really received grace for ourselves. We have rejected that gift from the one who has it all in the beginning and that it belongs to in the beginning and for always. It's like love. We love because God first loved us. And we love our neighbor as we love ourselves. But if we don't love ourselves, the, the love for our neighbor, the love for God, is a refusal to accept the gift that God has really given us in the first place, the genesis of all. Now, I'm not saying that we forgive and forget. No, actually, true forgiveness is to forgive and to remember. And I'm not saying that we forgive and enter right back into these situations of abuse and terror and hardship. No, that's not God's desire for us. The true power of forgiveness is that what we are doing is offering our pain, offering our anger, offering what has been done to us, to God. And when we offer it to God and we release it to God, and we release that person, we re release the one who has harmed us to God, then is a divine action. A God-initiated grace. One that comes right back around to us. So that we might continue forth in life. Not bitter, but better. In this political season, with all of the rhetoric in this COVID season with people who don't want to self-limit, people who don't want to live into the grace that they have received from others, all of us are challenged to forgive. But my prayer is that we will find it within us to be gentle with ourselves and to forgive ourselves because it is God's gift to us.
So whatever it is that we need to face within ourselves, let's forgive ourselves for it so that we might forgive others, so that we might release the pain, the bitterness to God. Allow God to deal with the other and move forward not in bitterness, but to be better for ourselves and for one another. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, all of God's people said, Amen.